Lord, we give you glory. You are worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Give him praise, give him praise. God is worthy. give God praise today. He alone is God and besides him there is none of From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun.
open in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our present help in a time of trouble, our strength and our redeemer. Lord, we Lord, we give you thanks and we give you all the glory and the honor and all the praise. Lord, we thank you for waking us up from last night's sleep. We thank you for food on our tables, clothes on our backs, shelter above our heads, and air in our lungs for us to breathe. Lord, you have been good to us, and we appreciate you for everything you have done to us, through us, and for us. Lord, we pray that you will forgive us of our sins, which we have grievously committed against you. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, sin, seen, and unseen, and help us with all of our problems. Lord, and we count these things done in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our guide, our protector, our shield, our buckler, and our counselor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. There's none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, children of God. I do greet each of you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Our God who was is and is to come. We thank him for another day in the land of the living. God did not have to allow you. God did not have to allow me to see this beautiful day. 
that he has made. But in his divine wisdom, in his divine majesty, in his divine providence, our creator saw fit for you and I to be in the land of the living one more time. And for that, we must say thank you. For those of you worshiping with us for the first time, I am Apostle Robert Bryant, pastor of the Christian Center Church Worldwide with our headquarters here in Kenston, North Carolina, USA. And I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Living the Word, a place where sound doctrine is brought to the ears of millions of God's people all over the world. We do thank God for each of you. We pray that the Lord is blessing you very, very well, wherever this broadcast and whenever this broadcast is locating you. One thing we want to understand about the word of God, children of God, is that God's word is eternal. God's word is God. And God said, Robert, tell my children for me that I will never go out of style. You see, sometimes, you know, I, I have some items I purchased back in the 90s. Uh, they were in style in the 90s, but here in 2020s, they are out of style. We have to get rid of them. God, God's word, God's purpose, God will never go out of style. So we bless God today, who he is what he has done for us, what he is doing for us. And understand this, understand this, my sister, God has even greater things in store for you and for me. Now, whether or not we partake, whether or not we take advantage, well, that, all of that is our business. But God has greater things for me. Now, my spirit is going to uh, our branch in Maryland, uh, pastored by uh, Pastor Richard Richard Christian had a wonderful topic today. The topic was that God wants to upgrade your life. You know, and upgrade. When you think about an upgrade, you think about things going from a a lesser or a lower or maybe a slower speed, a slower, and it it gets boosted and come on. This is what God wants to do for you. This is what God wants to do for me. Places that, that you hadn't you, you weren't going before, now you can go. Things that you weren't able to do, but now you can do. The Holy Spirit, understand the Holy Spirit. Upgrading our marriages, upgrading our marriages. Now, again, if you want to sit back, you know, the, the, been working with a, a 500 gigabyte and and a technician come in and said we want to upgrade you to a 2000 gigabyte it works fast it works smooth it, and you said no nah, no nah, i've stayed back with my 500 well see that's not the technician's fault because he was trying to upgrade you my prayer for you my prayer for me let god what let god upgrade us The disciples on the third day, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the Lord is just giving me this. I, you know, I didn't. God was trying to upgrade his disciples. On the third day after Jesus died, third day, Jesus was going to rise from the dead and was going to take them into a new phase, a new, old, new way of seeing and understanding. Uh, 
Uh, he was going to take them. He was going to upgrade. Disciples still in Jerusalem behind locked doors, afraid because of the Jews. Put this down in your notes. Don't let fear, thank you, Holy Spirit, stop you from being upgraded. Jesus was ready to take his disciples into a whole new realm. Show his disciples that the dead can raise and that the dead can come back with bodies that are glorified and much better. That He was going to take them into. Disciples said, no, no, no. The Jews going to get us. Who and what is it that you are afraid of that is keeping you from being upgraded in Christ, upgraded in the things of God? The disciples, their, their excuse was the Jews. The Jews going to get us. Jesus had to come in and rebuke his disciples for allowing another entity to stop them from being upgraded by their creator. Let God upgrade you, children of God. God has got some fantastic and some wonderful upgrades. Praise the living God. Uh, Bishop Christian and and the saints there in Maryland, uh, we had a very wonderful time with them earlier today. That is a great, great message. Now, for those of you that have been worshiping with us, you know we have been working on our topic entitled what? While we were God's enemies. Now, now we just finished that. And if you did not uh, have an opportunity to listen to that series, I encourage you Go back and 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 you're sure to be blessed by the Lord. So many things that God did for you. So many things that God did for me while we were what? God's enemies. Now, if God would do that much for us and to us and uh, while we were his enemies, what do you think God is going? What do you think God wants to do for us now? Now that we are his sons, now that we're, while we were enemies, Christ died, Christ died for us. While we were God's enemies, we were absolutely against God in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, where we were planning to go, what we were planning to do, what we were dwelling on. Everything about us was enemy, enemy, enemy. And while we were in that pitiful state, God said, Robert, I died for you how much more do you think i will do for you now that you are a son now that you are a daughter now that you are trying to live according to my rules standards and statutes so i want to encourage you my brother encourage you my sister god said god is just speaking to me i'm just kind of flowing in the spirit i you know, sometimes I'll be listening at people, but I'll be listening at God sometimes. And sometimes I don't even know. I had to apologize to some of the saints earlier today because God was, I was, I was so proud in the spirit of, of uh, Bishop Richard and, and how God is uh, revealing to him and sharing with him. And I was just kind of communing with the Lord in my spirit. And the Lord was sharing some things with me about discipleship. Now, you know, and it's important that I share this with you all. And, and God had given me to share with uh, saints in, in Maryland that no matter what our title, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, deacon, mother, saint, friend, we never outgrow the title of disciple. I mean, uh, uh, you know, if they introduce me a lot of times, I'll be in places, they'll be introduced. Apostle Robert, they could easily say, uh, disciple, Apostle Robert. We always remain, as children of God, we remain disciple. Disciple means a learned one or a student. If we ever get to the place that we feel like we don't have to be students of Christ anymore, we are in what? We are in trouble. Teacher. Is a student. I, I, you know, the Lord gave me some time ago that you can't be a good leader if you are not a good 
follower. You can't be a good father if you are not a good son. You know, you can't be a good, we can't be a good, so, so in order to be a good apostle, Robert, a good prophet, a good evangelist, a good pastor, a good teacher, you have to be a good disciple. When we are not good disciples, when we are not good students, when we are not good learned ones, then we are not good at anything else from that point on. There's no way you can be a good father over children if you're not a good son of God. There's no way you can be a good leader of God's people if you are not a good follower of God. So our relationship with God being in place and, and being as it's supposed to be, and be it, that's first and foremost before we can become or do anything good after that. So my encouragement to each one of us, let us focus on being good disciples before we try to be good pastors, before we try to be good bishops, before we, let's, let's be good disciples, let's be good students. We are still students of the Lord. Um, we're going to move on, children of God, to the book of Romans, chapter 3, with a special focus on verse 23. Romans, chapter 3, with a special focus on verse 23 from the New International Version. Apostle Paul writes to us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are going to be working for some time, if thus saith the Lord, from a topic, for all have sinned, for all, what? Have sinned. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, thank you. Thank you, Father. As we study your Holy Scripture, we want something to go along with your Scripture today, Father. We want your revelation. We want your insight. We want your instruction. We want your division. I present this body, Heavenly Father, to you with my imperfections, with my flaws, with my shortcomings, with my weaknesses. Father, I know that you choose imperfect beings to do your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Use us today, Father for your good, pleasing, and perfect will. And we will be very careful to give your name, which is above every other name, all glory, all honor, and all praise. These and all other blessings we ask and we count them done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray that God's people say amen. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Now, as we examine the Apostle Paul's writing to the church in Rome, we see a few things that we as believers have in common. I understand we as believers, we, we have some things in common. Number one, we all have what? We have all sinned. Now, your, your sin may not have been my sin and my sin may not have been your sin and, and our sin may not have been Jeffrey Dahmer's sin. You know, I wouldn't be surprised 
if Jeffrey Dahmer made it to heaven. Now, I don't know. I don't know what that. You say, Apostle, he was cooking and eating people. Look, you're going to be forgiving of cooking and eating people. There are going to be some people in the presence of God that are going to shock some of us. And there are going to be some people that don't make it to the presence of God that are going to shock some of us. Who would have bet? Who would have guessed that that thief hanging on the cross beside Jesus for stealing people's stuff would have went that day into paradise. Can you imagine the families that he had stole their life savings and took their money and robbed their house standing around the cross? Yeah, yeah, it's good. He's going to die and go straight to hell. They don't even know that he done already talked things over with the Lord. Come on, somebody help me preach. Got things what? Straightened what? Out. I don't know who I, I'm talking to today. I don't know who God has me prophesying to. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage me. If we don't do nothing else in this life, get things straightened out with what? The Lord. Some of the people we may have hurt may not know that. Some of the people we may have deceived. Some of the people, uh -huh, that may be. But this thief, that thief that hung on, on the cross with Jesus in his in his waning moments, he got things straightened out with the Lord. And Jesus told him today, come on, somebody. Why? You will be with me in paradise. While some of the families that he may have stole from us in there saying, he going to hell. I know he going to hell. It's good for him. Good. But he done already got things straightened out with God. I encourage you, my brother. I encourage you, my sister. Get things straightened out with God. Whatever it is. We as believers, we have all seen. We've all come short of the glory of God. Not just the pedophiles. Not just the drug dealers. Not just the Saddam Hussein. Uh, Gaddafi or whoever else this generation decides to make out to be a uh, an enemy and the most terrible OJ Simpson man how, how you know OJ Simpson people talking running still running their mouth about OJ Simpson how you know OJ Simpson didn't get that thing straight with God before he went away from here I know if I'd have killed them two people I'm not saying he did I'm not saying he didn't nah, I'm not getting all that but if I'd have killed them two people I'd have been like Lord ah oh, man I'm sorry Lord forgive me that how do we know O.J. Simpson didn't get things right with God? You run in your mouth. You and I don't know another man or another woman's relationship with God. Just quit running your mouth and work on what? Your relationship with God. Man, O.J. Simpson could be in the presence of God right now, jumping and dancing with angels praising and thanking God that he finished with the persecution he had to go through in this life, whether he did it or didn't do it. I'm not even getting into that. That's not even my business. What is my business is, and I wish I could have seen him before he went away from here. OJ, you can be forgiven for that. For real, apostle, man, you can be forgiven of that. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and that God has raised him from dead. God will save you. Now, men may not ever forget, you know, and I don't even know why he stayed in this country when he when he got off. You might have been persecuting me, but you'd have been persecuting me from over in in Africa somewhere or over in in Europe somewhere. Maybe over in Russia somewhere. You might have been persecuting. You might have been writing all kind of nasty and terrible things about it. But the Lord knows it wouldn't have been. I don't believe because I'd have been here around you to take that kind of abuse. You remember in the in the movie, the Lord just kind of flashed that in my spirit. You remember in the movie Jaws when young Hooper was, Quint was kind of picking on him a little bit. And young Hooper said, young Hooper said you know, when Quint went away, he didn't say it to Quint's face, but he, when Quint went away, he was like, I don't have to take this abuse any longer. You remember? You remember that point? I don't I don't have to take this abuse. You know, and see, that's my thing. 
you know, and I, I've shared this with some of the saints that and the Lord has in my spirit when I was down in uh, Ghana the last time. Go where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. You know, in this world, I know there are two types of people that deal with any of us. There are those that appreciate us and those that don't. People that don't appreciate us, we don't have, I don't have to stay, I don't have to stay around that. I don't have to take that kind of abuse because there are too many people in this world that appreciate. Too many people that are celebrate. You pop in your mouth when I come around. When I come around, well, I'm gonna stay around you for. Now, I don't know why O.J. Simpson chose to remain in this country. I, I, I can't figure that one out. But just remember, all have sin. You who are talking so negative about O.J. and what you believe he did and what you believe he got, you doing some stuff too. I'm doing some stuff too. All have what? Sin. No and come short of the glory of God. So that's one thing we all have in common, and that we as believers, as believers, we have all been justified by the atoning work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So those are two things that we have in common, children of God. Sin, on the one hand, that we all have fallen short of the glory of God, and as born again believers, we've all been justified by the atoning work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've been justified by a work that we didn't do. We couldn't save ourselves. We can't heal ourselves. We can't deliver ourselves. Sin is too powerful. It takes the creator to bring us up out of sin. It takes the creator to bring us up out of this thing called sin. And, and God is dealing with me in my spirit now. Not just the creator. Robert the creator had to die. Jesus had to die. For us to come up out of this sin. Now what we do, we place our faith in him. And now we can be redeemed. Our creator had to pure die for you and I to come up out of this thing called sin. Sin is no joke, children of God. Sin is powerful. It didn't, wasn't just the creator. It was the creator's death. Burial, resurrection. Jesus Christ was God, and like God had to die in order for us to be able to come up out of this thing called sin. Now, sin is no joke, my brother. It's no joke, my sister. My prayer for each of us: May we think about ourselves with sober or somber judgment. And not think more highly of ourselves than we are. So if we run around, you know, thinking our sin is not that bad. Somebody else's is terrible. We, we think that we're thinking with the wrong, with the wrong mentality. All unrighteousness is sin. Now, again, my spirit goes back to O.J. Simpson and how they have made him out to be the worst of the worst of the worst. Now, I mean, they just wouldn't let what O.J. Simpson did. They just wouldn't let it die. Hey, you ever hear anything? Do you can you remember the names of those four policemen that beat uh uh what was his name? Rodney King. Hey, do you hear about them and how terrible the people they are? Are they on the news every time you turn around? I wonder if they're gonna die and they're gonna be all publicized all on the news about how terrible they were. I can't even remember their names. I wouldn't even know their faces if I saw them. But old Jay Simpson, he was the worst of the worst of the worst. If you let this society and this wicked generation we live in, we'll let them tell the story. We will think about OJ Simpson the same way we think about Hitler. 
So under put this down in your notes. Men making you and I out to be enemies and God making you and I out to be enemies are what? Two different things. We got statues up around the country of former slave owners who killed and beat and raped and robbed and slaves. Statues up. But O.J. Simpson, if we let them tell it, is the worst of the worst. I'm not going for it. All have sinned. You have too. Just let you, if the speed limit is is 55 and you run in 60, you just as guilty of sin as OJ Simpson was if he killed those two people. Now it wasn't as terrible or what it just is guilty because all unrighteousness is sin. All have sinned. Many, many African-Americans have been killed. Unarmed African-Americans have been killed by police. Have you ever seen any of their names run through the mud, run through the muck and mire like you've seen O.J. Simpson's? O.J. Simpson, all right, all right. If he did, I oh, if he didn't, I don't know. But remember, my brother, Remember, my sister, all have sin. You too. Me too. Let us think of ourselves with sober or somber judgment, not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. We all have sin. We all do sin. And that as born again believers, we have all been justified by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul in approximately 57 to 58 Christ's ascension as a letter or epistle to the church in Rome. Uh, letter to Paul to the Romans, the sixth book of the New Testament and the longest and doctrinally the most significant of St. Paul and the Apostles' writings. It was probably composed at Corinth in about 57 Christ's ascension to both Jews and the Gentile Christians in Rome in order to persuade them to build up a peaceful and close relationship between their house churches. Now understand, and the Lord keeps flashing my Bishop uh, uh, Richard in my mind, you know, and even us, us at the Christian Center. When the church, the body of Christ, the saints were worshiping in homes. They weren't building, man, the early church, they weren't building big mega cathedrals and multi-million. They worship in homes. Church is not so much, put this down now, keep this in mind. It's not so much where we are as it is what who we are it's not so much where we are you know uh, wherever we go is the church you let me go into a country i go into a country on a layover you know i might go in the middle east somewhere and lay over in 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 abu dhabi or labor if i'm if i'm there TCC, the church is there. If you there, child of God, the church is there. You go to Walmart, church has just gone to Walmart. We are the church. It's not that where we are is the church, as who we are is the church. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Wherever we go, it's the church. Uh, and Lord says, share it, Robert, and then share a little bit of the message and prepare to close. Okay. Um, years ago, um, I was down in uh, Monrovia, Liberia for some programs. We had great 
programs. One of my daughters down there put together a lot of programs, met with a lot of high ranking officials, and different ones. And uh, while I was there, one of my sons in Ghana had put some programs together for me there. Number of churches and we were scheduled to uh, leave Monrovia, Liberia, and go into Accra, Ghana for their program. Well, make a long story short, when it was time for me to leave Monrovia, corrupt officials and different ones, they want to get some money out of me. That's 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 really what that was all about. So they took me, locked me up for about 15 days. I mean, took me in, high barbed wire, fences up, couldn't go. You know, and they knew I was upset, you know, it's my America, man. So they put me in, they put me in the best little room that they had. My mouth still poked out. My sons and daughters there in Liberia bringing uh, food and stuff to put in the refrigerator. I was still upset. I was still upset. I ain't there mad. You know, they said I had the, had the coronavirus. I'm in there. And uh, doctors and nurses, everybody knew I was upset. And they tipping all around. Ah. Apostle Brian, can we do anything that, you know, and I didn't want to hear nothing. I was upset. And spent about two weeks like that. Upset, just upset with everything, upset with everybody. Didn't realize something at the time. On the last day that I was there, Lord put in my spirit to share with the other inmates, because we were inmates, make no mistake about it, that we were going to have Bible study in my room at one o'clock. I went out and told a few. I was on the men's side. They had a women's side with women inmates over there. And I went and told a couple of the brothers on my side, we're going to have Bible study in my room at one o'clock. Bring your chair bring your mask and bring your Bible. Told just one or two of the young men every day, okay, Apostle Brian, Pastor Brian, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. And these young men took off, told as men, told so many people on that side, went over to the women's side, told the women, ran over to the to the uh 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 the doctors and the nurses told the doctors and the nurses, make a long story short, children of God, when one o'clock came, there were so many people in my room. The people were all outside in the in the hallway, doctors, nurses, women had come from the women's side, men. And I was like, Lord, what in the world is this now? I said, Lord, I don't even get this kind of turnout in the United States. And the Lord said, Robert. And I'll never forget, he gave me one of the greatest lessons. I'm having to paraphrase now because it's, it's been some time. That Lord said, Robert, you were upset about not being able to go over to Ghana for the programs that you had over there. And God said, Robert, I had a work for you. What? Right here. So I want to encourage every child of God on the sound of my voice, wherever you find your feet as a child of God, God has kingdom work for you right there. You might be on vacation. That means God got to work for you. You might be in va on vacation in Mexico somewhere. God got to work for you in Mexico. You look and find yourself in this country, that country. You find yourself at work. God has. I know your 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 job has work for you, but God said, "I have work for you while you at work." Wherever we find our feet, wherever our feet touch down, God has a work for us there. You in the United States, Robert? Yes, Lord. God said, "I didn't get get work. You got you have United States work." You, you you in uh, uh Europe, Robert? Yes, sir. God said you got Europe work. You in Africa, Robert? Yes, sir. God said you got Africa work. Wherever we find our feet have touched down. You 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 locked up in a facility, Robert. You locked up in a coronavirus facility. Yes, Lord. God said you got work there. His work. 
The reason, understand, put this down in your note. The reason why you are there, child of God, is because God has work for you to do there. Robert, you find yourself, you say you're locked up in a coronavirus, coronavirus environment. Yeah, Lord, I won't let this because I, I have work for you there. Children of God, there was some, when I when one up one p.m. came, there were so many people. My room wouldn't even hold them. People were all I took pictures, snap pictures. I said I can't, I can't hardly believe it. People all down the hall, doctors, nurses come to be up here, and I was angry because they wouldn't let me go to Ghana for programs. God said, Robert, you got a program right here. Right in this coronavirus institute. Later on that day, they let me out. You know, my daughter, some of my sons, they came pick me up. And I was like, I shared that revelation with them. They were like, wow, daddy. I said, I didn't even realize all that two weeks I was there. God had to work for me there to do there. But I was in, I was sitting there mad with my mouth poked out because I couldn't go to Ghana. When God had a work for me, right what? Right there. God has a work for you there see come on children of god we're gonna get just a taste of this the lord willing then we're gonna we're gonna go um house churches you find yourself in a house god has a work for you that's why he had house churches he had works for people to do right in there right in their homes churches right in their homes meetings of saints right in their homes the message is children of god that whenever we come together as god's children there's a work that we need to be doing wherever we are all right um romans chapter three um verses 21 through 31 we're just going to get a little taste here because we've kind of gone long Apostle Paul is sharing with the saints how that righteousness through our faith. We as children of God are still just scratching the surface in understanding what our faith has done for us, what our faith has opened up for us. Now, Lord just flashed something in my spirit here out of Romans fifth chapter. And we're gonna go here and then we, we're gonna just get a little taste. And again, we're gonna close. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about what our faith has done for us. Look at Romans chapter five, verse one. Paul writes on now, this is a little bit after our uh what Paul shared with us in Romans chapter three. But Romans chapter five, Paul says, therefore, since we have been justified through what? Faith. So number one, faith has caused you and me to be justified. As terrible of as what OJ Simpson may have or may have not done in in in, in the killing of those people, faith in Jesus Christ would have caused him to be justified, would have caused him to be declared not guilty. If anybody ever needed the Lord, Mr. Simpson needed the Lord. Because when, whereas men and women may not never forget your guilt for something you may have done or something you may have said or some place you may have gone, God be saying not guilty. Your faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. God said not guilty. The thief on the cross stole all those people's stuff. Faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus said no, not guilty. You're hanging on the cross for what you've done. You're crucified, being crucified for what you And God comes and says, not guilty. Our faith gets God to say to us, Regardless of what we have done, what we have said, how we have behaved, God come in and say, not guilty. We have been justified through faith. Watch it. We have, now this same faith will cause us to have peace with who? God. Again, 
I don't that I don't I don't believe there's anything OJ Simpson could have ever done in this America where he could have ever re received peace from some of these folk in this country. But his faith could have got him peace with who? God. There are some people that will never forgive you, that will never forgive me for things we have done or things we have said or things that, but God will. We have peace with God again through our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So keep this in mind. Understand that our faith in Jesus Christ is doing a lot, ha has done, is doing. And we could ever imagine. And that's why I share with you all. Faith is more important than finances. Faith is more important. Our faith can get us in the presence of God when we can be sent right straight to hell in, in, in perfect health. Faith. All right, so come on. All right, so here we go. So we're talking about righteousness. So God gives us righteousness through our faith. Now we may have we may have committed the sin all day. We may have been just as wrong as two left shoes, but our faith causes us, causes you, and causes me to be justified. Now, let's come on down here. Um Paul writes, for all have sin, for all have what is sin, all unrighteousness. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. Not only have all sin, God said, Robert, all do sin. We are not saved because we don't sin. We are saved because we place our faith in our Lord and Savior. What? Jesus Christ. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now watch this. And here's the beautiful part. Now we're going to close right here. And all are what? All are what? All are what? Don't be trying to hold that, hold that mess over me. We've been justified. God has declared me not guilty. Terrible as that was. Wrong as that was. As much as you were hurt by that. God loves him. Sorry. God has declared us Come on, somebody. Not guilty. And we did it. We said it. We messed up. We blew it. We blundered. Well, God come in and said, not guilty. They're not guilty. Don't you know some people who thought at that thief in heaven after he done stole their stuff, hanging on the cross with Jesus or crucified for what he did and many people as he hurt and did it. They some people uh, how he make it into heaven? How he how he make it in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because God can come in and say not guilty. Faith will make God put this down. Faith will make God say of the terrible thing you have done, of the terrible thing I have done. Faith will come in. Faith will come in. God will say not guilty. And we did it. And we said it. You might have did it. You might have said it. You might have thought it. You might have. God said not guilty. All are justified. Watch this. Freely by his grace. There it, put this down. You know, there is no sin. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And God said, Robert, get ready to close. There is no sin that grace cannot what? cover. One of the things that call oh my God, my, there is no sin 
You think it's uncoverable. You think it's unforgivable. God said grace can handle it. Grace is like a cleaner that will clean everything. You spread on grape juice, it'll clean it. You spread on ink stains, it'll clean it. You spread on this, you spread on, it'll clean it. Grace will clean it. Whatever the sin, God said grace is, gr grace is stronger, Robert. Whatever the sin, Robert, grace, my grace is what? Come on, somebody. Sufficient. We're going to close this message, children of God. All are justified freely by his grace. Watch this. Through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Listen, we don't even know how great a work Jesus Christ did for you and for me. And we don't know. We don't know. We're just scratching the surface. We just got an inkling. We're just getting a little taste. We're just getting a little taste. Bless our little hearts. We're just getting a little taste. Christ did, is doing, and will do more for us than we will know in this life. Well, give God praise for this message today. I had no idea the Lord was going to share all what he did, but then I never know what our, what our God is going to share. I just try to be a vessel. Let God share what he wants to say and do what he wants to do. Well, as my bishop used to say about 50 years ago, that's the message. That's the message. Closing selection. Saints, you can reach us through email at ApostleBrian2000 at Yahoo.com. Check out our website at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash THADFG dot Wixsite dot com forward slash TCCCWW to make donations. Or you can donate through Cash App dollar sign ApostleBrian2000. Feel free to join us on TalkShoe, Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes Daily. On Facebook, join us on Robert Guy Bryant IV. On YouTube, join us on the Christian Center Church channel. We can even be reached by phone at plus 252-525-4777. Donations should be sent by using the donation button on TalkShoe, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, or on the Cash App application, dollar sign, Apostle Brian 2000. God bless you and heaven smile on you. In Jesus' name, amen.